Uh, the purpose of this afternoon is to publicly release the corporate governance report, uh, which was put together by the Honourable Mark uh, Bibb on behalf of the Australian Rugby Union in order to ensure that we had best corporate governance principles as a sport and secondly a governance oversight of the game which was a fairer representation of where the game has evolved to at this period of time. There are two key principle changes when you look at all the uh, 15 recommendations that are put in the report and the fundamental changes are the voting structure. Currently we have uh, 14 votes, a vote for the uh, members, the member votes for the Australian Rugby Union constitutionally. That will move to 16 votes. The current votes are strongly held by New South Wales and Queensland, and New South Wales has five. Out of those 14, Queensland has three. And we're moving to an outcome where each state and territory gets a vote. States and territories which have more than 50,000 registered players get another vote. Each of the Super Rugby franchises gets a vote and the players get a vote. The second major change is that all directors on the ARU are required to be independent. Currently we have directors who are appointed by New South Wales, by Queensland, by the other states and a couple of truly independent directors as defined in the term independence and this uh, review is moving all directors to be independent. The Governance Committee uh, was really impressed with the report, thought it provided a great basis to go forward. Uh, endorsing what Michael said, the 1949 constitution was, has been useful, but it's out of date and it doesn't represent the modern structure of rugby. Uh, with what we're doing here, we recognise the reality that this is a professional game, it's a national and international game, and it must uh, be uh, run in the most business-like way, so that uh, the structure of the board is not only independent, but highly professional. So while we will be intent that a nominations process will still allow the culture of rugby to be reflected in the composition and structure of the board, uh, equally the business skills of the men and women on the board is very important. And uh, to run a multi-million dollar business in a way which returns to the membership, all the constituents of rugby, the maximum amount of dollars that are necessary even in a largely amateur game. The vast majority of our players are amateurs, but they must be looked after by the rugby dollar in a highly competitive inter uh, national and international sports market. Directors of a board are responsible to all the shareholders, in this case all the members, but beholden to none. That's got to be the principle. They must act always in the best interests of the entire game and all of its stakeholders. There must be no either real or perceived perception that they favour this entity or another entity. Uh, in relation to this, there's a tremendous amount of uh, collegiate and institutional knowledge on the board as it is now. We're therefore proposing not to have a Big Bang Theory where the board is abolished and we start again. Uh, it's entirely likely that the nominations committee will want people to go forward uh, but without a state uh, um, uh, cachet to their membership or their, their directorship. We've got two independent directors at the moment, Michael's one and Anne Sherry's another. Uh, the rest of us are state uh, nominated and as we come up to our end of time, uh, if we are renewed, it would be on the basis that we cut all ties with uh, an entity and go forward as independents. If we're not re renewed, then of course you'd expect uh, whoever came on to be absolutely red hot as a business person or in some other area uh, that the, the, um, the board needs.